guys, I'm sure about you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Glad to have you all here. Today, we're going to do a champion guide on the epic Void Champion Faceless from the Knight's Revenant faction. Now, this is a very, very unique epic champion. Really a unique champion overall inside the game. And thus, there's a build that you guys really ought to consider. Maybe a little bit unorthodox that I want to share with you guys on this champion in today's video. So let's go ahead and jump right to it. Let's start with, well, his kit. Why is he so unique, Ash? First off, He's a Void Affinity Champion. There's no weak Affinity matchups. This is definitely noteworthy and a great benefit to him, especially when we consider the A3. But first on his A1, Fireball. Attacks one enemy, has a 15% chance of placing an extra hit. Okay, it is what it is. On the A2, Lightning. Fire, Lightning, and then Ice Bolt. He's got, a, he's got all the elements, man. Uh, lightning. Increased crit rate on this champion for two turns, and then attacks one enemy. So another single target, kind of uninteresting ability. The increased crit rate is nice in PvE, namely in Faction Wars. Uh, but we're not going to build him with 70% crit rate. So to me, it's kind of a... It's a nice little add-on if you need it, I guess. Uh, but again, it's not a game changer. Similar to the A1, that 15% chance of extra hit is really far from a game changer there as well. But really, it's all about the Ice Bolt when we talk about Faceless in terms of what makes him special. Uh, attacks one enemy on a three-turn cooldown. You can book it out for more damage. It is one of these rare situations where booking out a champion, if you're actually going to be using Faceless in the arena or in Faction Wars, I would say in the arena, actually, uh, that would be the only reason to book this this champion like if you build him maybe you watch this video maybe you're like dude i like what he's doing man this is a unique build and a unique opportunity with this champion uh he really is in some ways he's not like an s tier champion but in some ways he does what only like a couple champions in the game can do on this ability ice bolt right so first off uh it is worth booking for extra damage if he's going to be a damage dealer is what i mean to tell you guys otherwise don't book this champion just use him in in whatever faction wars uh ice bolt attacks one enemy ignoring shield and block damage so he's a great counter, a great counter to Helicath, who is everywhere inside the arena, and obviously has that big boy shield on his A2 and the block damage on his A3. He'll ignore both. Obviously a great counter to champions like, I don't know, Valkyrie as well, right? Any big shield champion as well. Uh, so the cool thing about it is, though, it has a 100%, just picture the word, whenever we're ignoring death or defense, right, uh, in a kit, that's 100% defense. We're ignoring 100% of enemy defense with this ability, thus making it one of the strongest nukes out there in the game. There is only a couple abilities inside the entirety of Raid Shadow Legends that ignores 100% defense. I'm thinking about, for example, the Peril ability of Mortu Macabre, right? So it's a secret ability, but when you unlock it, uh, it will ignore shield, block damage, as well as defense. It reads the same. It does have a deny revival as well on it, which makes it even better, but it is a secret skill that only has a 20% uh, chance of unlocking every time he is hit. Uh, so again, this is a really good ability. I think there's also uh, Mr. Bloodgorged on his A3, right? will ignore 100% of enemy defense, okay? But again, there's not a lot of them in their, their legendary, you know? Uh, Faceless has this ability. So what does that tell us about this champion? One is he can absolutely smack with that A3. We can look at the multipliers here. On the A1 and A, uh, or an A, an A, what? I look at average and I say A. A3 attack multiplier on the A1. A 5.5 on the A2. It's a really nice multiplier, albeit a single target. So it's good for an epic, certainly. It can't stand uh, on toe-to-toe -to -toe with like the OP legendaries like a, uh, a Overkill from Bellinor or a Quietude from Constantine uh, the Dayborn. Uh, but still, not bad, right? Hard hitting. On the A3, it's an a 3 multiplier, but it's a godlike rating. 3 multiplier, don't get discouraged by that multiplier. It doesn't, I mean, of course it matters, but it doesn't matter that much. Three sounds like a, a, a kind of a lousy number, but when we're ignoring 100% of defense, it's it's incredibly hard hitting. So it gives us an opportunity to build this champion a little bit differently than we would our typical nuker, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at him and how I have him built today. So you'll see here, first thing that you'll notice is no savage, no lethal. There's no need. There's no need for Savage Gear and Lethal Gear on this champion in the arena. 
I mean, of course, yes, you can get a little bit of ignore defense off of the A2 and off of the A1. But truth be told, we really want this ability to smack so we can stack up as much crit damage as humanly possible. We're ignoring 100% of defense anyway, and it's on a short cooldown three turn. Now, again, I just want to reiterate here because I'm inevitably some people in the comments will be like, dude, I build mine in Savage Gear and I love it because of the A2 and the A1. It will make the A2 and the A1 hit pretty hit a little bit harder, but they hit pretty hard anyway. And again, I can't stress enough, Ice Bolt is the crown jewel of what makes this champion special. So if you want to get the most out of this ability, knock off the, the tankiest opponent on the enemy team, knock it down their reviver right out the gate. Well, we want to min-max this Ice Bolt ability, okay? Uh, so for that reason, I personally do not build him in Savage and Lethal. And let's face it, guys, you have only so much Savage and Lethal gear on your account, right? It's better off, in my opinion, to put it on champions that really need that, that really need it inside the arena or anywhere else in the game. Faceless, you can get away with triple crit damage, and we can just stack up that crit damage. So uh, I have not picked my masteries out yet. Uh, so this will be 103 once we pick up the crit rate in just a moment here. But the stat priorities on this champion are very basic. Uh, he's a little low on the speed. I like to have my nukers even over 200 speed in the arena. We're talking like gold four or gold five and plat or, or live arena, like silver and, and gold, depending on when you're watching this video, it's kind of escalating every day, right? Uh, if you're using him in PVE and faction wars, we don't want to negate or totally ignore the fact that this guy's pretty squishy, 738 on the defense and 17.5k on the HP. So some survivability is always nice, maybe on your ring or on your uh, your banner as well if you want to. Uh, if you're using him in the arena, you can afford to kind of go in there and try to get as much attack as you can on this champion, right? Uh, so there we go. Stat priors are going to be crit rate, 100%. Uh, and then attack and crit damage, right? A fairly easy champion to build. As we can see in his kit, there are no debuffs. There's no need for accuracy, obviously, on this champion. Uh, when we talk about blessings on this champion, frankly, I would go for anything that has extra crit damage if you can get it to four stars. Uh, again, we're just trying to stack up more crit damage on this champion. I think that Cruelty is a fine option. Uh, also, Crushing Rend as well for this champion. On Masteries, let's go ahead and pick them out together, guys. It's going to be a little bit different than how we build, typically build nukers. Of course, we are going to come down the defensive side of things to start things off. We're going to pick up Improved Parry to mitigate critical damage. Uh, we're going to pick up Bloodthirst. We're going to come down to uh, Delay Death, and we're going to come down to Retribution. So pretty basic on the defensive side of things. We're going to pick up the crit rate and, of course, that crit damage as well. We're going to pick up Keen Strike to, or Shield Breaker, excuse me. Keen Strike we already picked up for the crit damage. Uh, shield Breaker to help mitigate shield, even though we're ignoring it on the A3. It does help on the A1 and the A2. Uh, we want to pick up Ruthless Ambush to get an 8% uh, damage boost on our first hit in the arena. Uh, and of course, we do want to pick up Cycle of Violence. 30% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random skill by one turn if the damage inflicted of that skill exceeds 30% of the target's max HP. That is going to be happening... Well, a lot with that A3, okay? So we can bring that down to a two-turn cooldown just off the cycle of violence proc. This is a very, very good mastery for this champion. Uh, we're going to come right down to... Uh, I want to come right down to Blood Shield, and I want to pick up a Flawless Execution on this champion. It's, again, not a mastery that we normally choose in the arena, especially. It's almost always uh, Helm Smasher, but it does make sense for the reasons we already discussed, given his kit, uh, you know, as is. I do want to pick out Single Out, and mainly to come down to bring it down. Damage increases by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. That's pretty much always going to be the case, so we'll take that. Because he's going to kill somebody likely on the first shot of the arena, we do want to pick up Kill Streak as well. Increase damage inflicted by 6% in the arena for each enemy killed by this champion in battle so those are the final masteries as i said guys it looks a little bit different than your typical arena nuker but i think it makes a lot of sense for his kit and those counter attacks on that nice juicy three multiplier on the a1 with retribution will come in handy as well so there we go guys that is the build obviously we do have speed on the boots we have attack percentage on the chest and we have crit damage on the gauntlets we have attack on the banner we have crit damage on the amulet and we have defense with a trip roll 
of attack on the ring. Again, don't be afraid to go defense or HP to make him a little bit more, I don't know, uh, survive a little bit longer, a little tankier. I don't know if that's the right, maybe less squishy is the best word uh, to use, especially if you're using him in PvE. Uh, and then total stats now is 103 and 306 crit damage. And keep in mind, we're getting the masteries, 30% uh, extra crit damage from masteries. And then we're also getting 60 crit damage from the triple crit damage set. So 90 extra crit damage. If we take away the triple sets in his masteries, we're all the way down to 213 uh, crit damage. So we're getting a lot of it through that decision on the mastery tree and the gear selection. So let's go ahead and try them out in the arena, guys. Uh, I do have Faction Wars open right now for Knight's Revenant, so we can go ahead and run him there just to see what kind of damage he does compared to, like, you know, some AoE champions like Skullcrown, etc., Thylessia, whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and just try him out here. Hopefully we go first. I do have a uh, an Arbiter and a Kaimar on the team. The reason I like having a Kaimar and a Madame Ceres on the team, well, you know, obviously... Setting up with the increased attack is going to be mandatory. So there's a lot of increased attack champions in the game, whether you're talking about it like a Gorgorab uh, or a, you know, an Arbiter or a Duchess or a Rock of Vile Tide. I mean, there's a lot. Yoshi the Drunkard. I could keep going and going and going. So setting him up with an increased attack champion is going to be great. The reason I have Kaimar and Madame Ceres on this team is twofold. Number one is, is we can, you know, CC the enemy team with a sleep from Kaimar. Uh, number two is we can come in here and not only debuff them with Madame Ceres, but we can also not wake anybody up. So now it's going to give me a decision. We have a single target nuker. We have no AOE nuker on this squad, right? So we're not going to be able to kill everybody in one shot. So it's nice that we can CC some of these champions. So I'm going to go after basically the tankiest champion that is not asleep. And that's going to be uh, Lydia. So let's see how much damage we can do to Lydia here. 122,000 with the A3. That was pretty dang nice. Now we can go in here and just kind of poke away at whoever's not sleeping right now. They won't get a turn. With Kaimar, we can reset the cooldowns, come right back in with the A3 as well. Let's remove that. Let's go ahead and set up the turn meter boost again. They do have a cleanse, but now let's go ahead and pop off Mithrala. Now keep in mind, this time we're going to ignore 100% of defense uh, you know what? Let's go for Staltus because we know he has a ton of defense with an increased defense buff up. I would venture a guess he's probably sitting at, let's say he was 5,000 base defense. Uh, so he's at like 7,500 or more than that 8,000-ish on the defense right now. We're ignoring it all. 103k, man. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much... <laughs> Sorry for prolonging my point there, but you get it. It doesn't matter how much defense they have. We're ignoring 100% of it. Uh, so now we get to try out his A2 for the first time. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we do have a weaken on Lysandra, so I'm, I'm confident we'll easily be able to one-shot her here. But, you know, let's just try the A1, because then we can come back around and try to one-shot Mithrala. Try to one-shot everybody on the team. So here's the A1 Fireball. Not bad. We actually did get the extra hit there. That 15% came through, right? So that was pretty cool. Uh, come in here, remove the buffs on Mithrala. Speed boost again. And now we get to try out the A2 on Mithrala Lifebane. She's under no debuffs, meaning no decreased defense or weaken here. Uh, so that's not ideal, but let's see how much we can do with the A2 with none of, actually we do have the weekend now, awesome, here it is, boom, lightning ability, 56k, so you guys can kind of see how the damage stacked there, it was granted, we were attacking some targets with debuffs, some targets without, so it's hard to compare, but obviously a big number, 120 something k on the A3, uh, two, we got two hits around 30k each or so on the A1, and then we got the, uh, you know, somewhere in the between on the A2, uh, two. uh so let's go ahead again, as one more tanky team here i mean i hate going i've already mentioned this before guys i hate going against teams like this no offense it's just all defensive based champions but let's go ahead and try to employ the same strategy so this also having kaimar and madam saris on the team although it does make me a little bit vulnerable to uh whatchamacallit, to uh, Polymorph. It's also nice to have two shots at removing Stone Skin, as we just saw there with, what was it, Lydia under Stone Skin? So now, uh, on this scenario, I want to take out the uh, the Duchess. I want to take out their only Reviver on the squad. So even though she's sleeping, I'm going to go in. Boom, Ice Bolt, 85k. Doesn't matter. They had, uh, they had whatever on... Uh, uh, bulwark uh, mastery on so some of that was soaked up and we still got the job done so that was great 
So now we're provoked right now, so we're going to have to take a turn to go back through. Let's go ahead and turn meter boost here, come back in. That was just the A1 against Krisk, nothing much there, obviously. Uh, we do have a lot of debuffs on our team, and it looks like Krisk might just shut me off, shut me down. Petrification as well. We don't like to see this, guys. Not looking too good. Let's go ahead and just get that turn meter boost to get those petrifications off. Let's try to remove some of these buffs from the enemy team, and let's see what we can do here. Let's... Uh, I kind of want to keep the revive up at this point, right? Let's go in and CC them. We take the turn. That's good news. Let's go in here and just kind of poke away. Again, Chris does have Bulwark, so he's going he's gonna to stay up. I want to keep the revive up. Let's just keep poking away at Mithrala here. Maybe we can take her down using somebody other than Faceless. But right now, Faceless... It wasn't ideal there, right? We're going to ignore the revive. We're going to, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a bad time. So, hey, I talked smack about the team and then what happened? Chris took me down, man. Took me down. Uh, cake on my face, but it's okay. Uh, let's go against a, another, another squad here. How about this team? Let's go against this team. Again, kind of a tanky team, right? Let's see what we can do here. Uh, so you would use this strat, and this is why, like, you know, I can't sit here and say that this is the definitely the champion you should invest everything in, blah, blah, blah. Really cool champion, but at the same time, uh, again, can basically one-shot anybody, which is really cool from an epic champion. But at the same time, it's not like you're going to speed farm your Great Hall with this sort of a champion. He's mainly like, you know, a secondary nuker on a team. Uh, like if we didn't have a Madame Ceres on this team, we didn't have anybody coming in there. And let's see again. But look at that, dude. Like that's some serious taking down Mighty Uko, taking down Pytheon. Both their revivers are down. He can do some really fun things, obviously. Uh, but of course, the downside is it's not like I was like I was saying, right? He's not a speed farmer or anything like that. It's not going to help you max out your great haul efficiently. Uh, he's good, but he's rather niche. You know, I mean, how many how many teams? Are running again 76k there not too bad granted against a squishy champion but how many teams right now are running just one single target nuker to make something like this happen not very many however you can have a hell of a lot of fun if you're trying to push to platinum for the first time or whatever like he's a total viable option there as well so let's go ahead and take a run here into uh into Faction Wars, as I promised, before we end off this video. I am traveling for work, guys. I figured I'd mention this. Uh, we have an all-epic team here. Faceless, the Sisters, Thylesia, Rector Drath. I think we'll be okay, but it won't be a super quick run. So I'll probably come back at you guys. When we get to the red boss, then I'll talk to you a little bit about... Because I just want to do a damage check, essentially, here. I'll talk to you a little bit about the next week or so on the channel. I'll be right back. So, guys, I just want to say, first of all, it's been seven minutes. <laughs> and the team has, like, died and came back and died and came back. But the only reason... And this is worth highlighting here. The only reason we're actually passing through this is him using this wave of Valkyries in these disgusting shields on shields on shields on shields with three of them uh is him faceless in there ignoring shield and killing everybody with the a3 one at a time right so that's the only way it's taken us almost eight minutes but hey especially if you're trying to clear these faction wars for the first time and there he goes the last one down he gets the job done there so that's definitely noteworthy that hey if nothing else you don't even have to book him because it's just a little bit extra damage. It's still on a three-turn cooldown. You can use him to get by that stupid Valkyrie wave in Faction Wars. So as I was going to tell you guys, I'm probably going to miss a few days of uploads. I am traveling for five days uh, coming up here for work. So uh, yeah, well, I mean, that's it. I'm prepping enough content for the main channel to have a video every day. But for this channel, I might just go every other day on Champion Guides uh, for a little bit. Uh, and then I'll come back at you at least on a daily basis. I do hope to get to double uploads as frequently as I can as well, uh, just because there's a large catalog of champions in this game, and I intend to do all of them. I still do intend to get a guide on every champion. It might take me till 20... 35, but uh, that's the goal here on the channel anyway. Uh, so uh, you can see he's getting the job done. I'm very curious to see how much damage this dude puts out here. It's going to be interesting. Obviously, all of those AoE attacks from Skullcrown and Sinesha as well. Uh, but then again, as I, as I mentioned, he did the heavy lifting there in terms of those Valkyrie waves. Uh, so how's he doing here? Ice Bolt 120k. That's his A2 again, guys. I'll remind you. Uh, against the red boss. So not too bad there. 
it's too bad that increased crit rate wasn't on his A3. I mean, it'd probably make him like, nah, I don't know. I was going to say like two OP, but I don't think so. It's too bad that it wasn't on the A3 because, ah, oh, the mirror universe. I hate that ability. I hate it. Yeah, because it was on the A3, we could build him with 70% crit rate and be confident that and just stack even more crit damage. Uh, but anyway, guys, uh, let me come back at you at the end of the battle. You don't need to see this bar go down again. Be right back. All right, guys, here we go. It took us 10 minutes, but we're going to get the job done in this number. <laughs> will finally be unveiled to you guys. Here we go. It's going to be some accurate, six star accuracy glyph. Not too bad. Faceless putting out a cool 1.5 milli damage. Not too bad for a single target nuker, guys. I hope you found this video helpful on your face, uh, faceless, uh, you know, uses inside the game. A pretty dang cool and unique champion. I think he's worth building. Not, nece not a necessity to any account, but definitely a very cool champion to have with certain serviceable need or serviceable use cases inside the game. Thank you for watching and as always take care guys.